Mr. Blazer here got us a new video called Coat Season 3, The Good, The Bad, and The Future. Let's shit on Studio Alerts together. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 has finally concluded with all 13 episodes finally being out and of course me watching all of them. I am now going to give my thoughts on the overall season because there is a lot to talk about. Now originally- See what he should have done was what Mr. Baseless Upin did. Did he cover every episode review? He didn't, right? Bro just waited the entire season? I feel like it's good to, I don't know. It depends on what his goals are with his YouTube channel, but I don't know. I feel like a weekly video on like every episode and then a final video like this would have been pretty good. I was planning on doing breakdown videos for every episode that aired, but okay. things just didn't go exactly as planned. More specifically, it had to do with copyright. For some reason, no matter how much I tried changing my original video in which I was going to talk about the first episode and break copyright? it down, it was just constant copyright problems. And at that point, I just... Ah, uh, bro just doesn't know it like... Okay, so if you're gonna watch this, like, basically, I mean, you've already done it. Like, you're showing the anime footage right now, right? There's, like, a specific time amount that you can show, like, the actual anime footage for. So, sometimes it's better to not let the footage play. Just, like, have little screenshots, like, still frames of different parts and show that if you don't want to play the game of, oh, can I show the footage for three seconds? Can I show the footage for four seconds? And then what? Do you have to then cut ahead how many seconds? Who really knows, right? So... Stuff like that's kind of bullshit in the anime, uh, anime YouTubing space. Gave up and decided to wait until all 13 episodes came out, and then I will give my overall thoughts about it, which I am doing now. Now, of course, since I am going to talk about everything that happened in Classroom of the Elite Season 3, there is going to be spoilers. So if you haven't finished Season 3, then we you should have be good. Been warned because this is going to contain spoilers. So now that that's out of the way, let's just begin. Of course, I'm mainly going to be talking about almost every arc and how the anime adapted every single novel okay. because they did adapt it in many different ways. And of course, some of them were good. Some of them were not so great. And then some of them were just like in the middle where it was okay, but it wasn't yeah, Giga Chen. So we're going to start with episodes one and two, which adapted volume eight, which is also known as the training camp arc. Now I have been very open about why I don't like this arc. It wasn't bad, but it's probably one of my- Really? I thought this arc was... There were some hype moments, right? There's a lot of good shit that would happen, but one of the things that pissed me off was the fact that they skipped all the tests at the end. like. Maybe it's not important to cover every single test, but they have this habit, and, and this is shown during the special exam where we kind of... Did we skip through? We, I, I think the special exam near the end, they, at least they showed the basketball game, at least they showed the mental math and stuff like that a little bit more. In the mountain arc, in this practice exam arc, god damn, they skipped over fucking everything. They showed a little bit of the running, but even the Koenji stuff, they fucking cut out, which I was pissed me off. And then it's like, they just showed the final outcome. And I guess at the end of the day, all people really wanted to see was the showdown between Nagumo and Manabu. But I, I, I could totally understand why he feels this way. Least favorite arcs of year one of Classroom of the Elite. And I'm not alone in this. There are many, many Classroom of the Elite fans who have read the novels who have also stated that this is not their favorite arc. So Well, okay, that is like... Every light novel reader is gonna share the same opinion that the anime fucking sucks and the arcs fucking sucked and it could be so much more. Absolutely. But like, I feel like that's not really an... I think that they are right. The light novel readers are right. It could be much better. But what, what matters more is like the anime only's opinions. And here's why I say this. Because the anime only's opinions and how much they love the anime despite the shitty adaptation will determine whether or not Studio Lurch and other... You know, will they continue adapting the anime, right? Because a lot of people are like, I hate this. This fucking sucks. This adaptation sucks. But it turns out the anime just continues to get more popular and more successful by every metric that can be shown. So it's like, yes, I understand that the light novels readers hate it. But it's like, at the end of the day, the anime only doesn't seem to really give a fuck about it because they don't really know what they're missing. And for me, it's always like, I watched the episode and it's like, damn, this is great. And then I watched the light novel readers like say all the shit that we missed. And it's like, Damn, this fucking sucks. That's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really too bothered when only two episodes adapted the entirety of this volume. Now, of course, there were some people, which I was actually surprised, were actually mad that they didn't adapt it correctly. Volume 8, that they only gave them two episodes. But I think the majority of people were fine with it because they probably also knew as well that this is an arc that not a lot of people were excited for. And okay. this is probably because of many different things. I already stated them in the past. I even made a video about it. 
why the training arc did he did he actually make a video on this hold up things i already stated them in the past i even made why the training camp arc is my least favorite arc of class really was it that bad <laughs> he just has fucking tachibana just crying right in the middle dude <laughs> video about it in which i stated how the reason why this volume isn't really that liked by so many people is because there really wasn't a lot of things going on like most of the favorite characters that people enjoy they didn't really asahina and koji starting up right there was a little bit of koenji you know showing his true colors around Anna koji saying you're the one that took out ryuin right what else that happened, right? The whole, like, uh, Manabu uh, telling Koji to take out, you know, Nagumo for him. And then we had the revelation that the vice president of the student council club also was, like, a double agent for us, right? Wasn't there a bunch of shit going on? And then, like, the Hashimoto and, like, the, the Ishiza. And then again, everything I'm mentioning now, there sounds like a lot. But if you really think about, like, in the grand scheme of things, from the light novel, I'm sure they cut off so much more. Or maybe compared to other light novel volumes, there was so much less. But... I don't know. I felt like this arc was fine. But again, from the light novel's experience, right? If a reader's experience, it probably isn't as good as some of the other volumes that they really like. Exist in this volume for whatever reason. It mostly centered about characters that you probably didn't really care for or you didn't really got to know them as much during these times like Ishizaki or Albert or Hashimoto. These are characters that were always in the background, but they never really had the spotlight. And when yeah. they did have a spotlight in this volume, it wasn't really that interesting because, well, you haven't really developed these characters. So not a lot of people are going to be caring for these characters when they have interactions with Ayana Koji. And Did you guys feel that way? Did y'all really feel that way? I felt like one of the special things about Classroom of the Elite is how they're able to bring in these supposed NPCs, the side characters that are in the background, that are sometimes shown, may not even talk. But suddenly they get the spotlight cast on them. And then it's like, whoa, they're actually legit. I think Matsuchita is the most recent example near the end of season three, right? I thought that the whole Ishizaki, Keisei, Yukimura, Hashimoto, they're all like sharing their like relatable memories and dreams together and like even crying about it and becoming brothers, even though they started off kind of, they started off kind of on a rough spot, right? I thought, I thought that was kind of beautiful to the point where they call, start calling each other family and were kind of like memeing about it. I, personally enjoyed it but maybe to some other people these characters they see them and they're like who the fuck are these characters why do i give a fuck then again i do have a personal bias where i care a lot more about the side characters i like making fun of npcs and trying to see are they gonna fucking do something and when they cat when, when the spotlight is actually cast on it i'm like holy shit michan's fucking talking holy shit matsushita is actually talking holy shit we're family now with the class c boys i don't know i think the only saving grace for this volume was of course the Ayana Koji moment but also the Koenji moments because mm. Koenji is a very interesting character so seeing him do pretty much whatever he wants in this volume was really just funny to see because that's something that you would expect from Koenji by now and also the other saving grace of the I think Koenji in the mountain arc apparently the boar scene right the hunting the boar scene that was like anime only material right because the way that um e even during the boar scene where he hunted the boar down and Anna Koji and Koenji were talking and they were like a sp they, that's the moment where Koenji was like you took down dragon boy right and then apparently that I thought it was cool but then it's like the light novel said that um uh, there was like a whole different way I, I think there was like a race going on right I think they were like actually running and Anna Koji was able to keep up with Koenji and Koenji was like oh what the fuck because in the anime what was it I think, did Ayana Koji like grab onto Koenji or some shit, right? He grabbed onto him and the physical force after that little brief interaction, Koenji was like, huh, you took that Ryun, didn't you? I don't know. I, my only gripe with Koenji's moments in this arc was the fact that they fucking skipped the running part where Koenji was about to go the next beyond. You remember in season two, Manabu and Koji running? And then Koenji, Koen, sorry, sorry, Manabu and Ayana Koji running? And Ayana Koji at a certain point was like, look, now I'm going to go even beyond. And then we get a white screen off screen. And we got the same fucking shit with Koenji at the running, you know, at the end of the exam. Maybe in the light novel, the same shit happened. I would have personally loved to see it. But I, I thought that Koenji was really good throughout the entire season of season three. I would argue that season three is Koenji's fucking season. If you compare the amount of screen time and the shit that he did in season one and season two, Koenji popped the fuck off a lot in season three. And, and I have a personal bias, right? I have a personal bias where if Koenji does something, if he fucking talks, if he's shown, I'm like, <laughs> it's a 10 out of 10 episode. So you should never take like an objective criticism from me seriously. But it's like, to me, because Koenji was so common in season three, I would have loved to see him in the finale. 
The fact that they just kept showing him do more shit, I was like, oh my god, I'm eating so fucking good. This arc was, of course, Nagumo. And I'm finally glad that the anime finally gave him some scenes because Nagumo has pretty much been cut out in a lot of moments in Classroom of the Elite. Like, there were a lot of moments that were supposed to happen in Season 2 with Nagumo that never got adapted. And mm. that's really a shame because Nagumo is one of those characters that at first you didn't think too much of, but you saw how much of a huge threat he was. And he showed it very clearly in the training camp arc and his plot to take down Tachibana. That was something that was very important for his character. And of course, it is still shown in this arc in the anime, but it was basically more building up in the novels. So overall, while the training camp arc is... The Nagumo part, I thought that like... They were really teasing Nagumo in season two, right? They're like, we have a new transfer student president, student council president. You know, the one that's going to succeed, Manabu, is going to be Nagumo. And Nagumo started to talk about his whole difference in the ideology, right? Difference of, I want to make sure that y'all aren't getting uh, dragged down by your own shitty classes, right? These NPCs, they fucking suck. If you, ha if you as an individual can um, prove through meritocracy, then you can climb up in the school. And that was very compelling. And I was like, whoa, this is going to change up a lot in the second year coming up, right? And Nagumo in season three, um, this, when he showed his true self, right? When he showed his true... True self as in like he showed how he works, right? Until this moment, we're like, how does this guy really work? I was like, is he like a male Kushida? He seems to have like united all the second years, but it's like, how? Why does everyone even fucking trust him, right? And then we see how he dealt with Tachibana and Manabu, right? It's like, oh, you know what? We're gonna expel one of your students. Tachibana can go, but one of our people can go. But it's like, because I have more points at the end of the day, even though we both lose, like you lose more than me and I'm still on top. And at that point, I was like, this guy's fucking crazy. And the fact that he, like, declared a duel to Manabu in, like, this season, I was like, in, in this arc, I was like, this shit's really hype. And then, what did Baseless Yupen say? What did Baseless Yupen say in, uh, what's it called? Uh, in, in his, like, review of Coat, right? He said that Nagumo, but the thing that they cut out of Nagumo, which was really important, is the fact that Nagumo only did this out of pure respect for Manabu. Nagumo always wanted to get... Senpai's attention, acknowledgement, right? But Manabu was always too busy looking at Aonakoji, right? And when I heard that, and it's like, damn, this really humanizes Nagumo. But I think the anime, specifically Studio Alert, has a way of trying to portray characters in a different light compared to the light novel. One example of that is Aonakoji. Aonakoji is an emotionless, cold, ruthless robot in the anime. But if you read the light novel, you'll, see, you'll start to see that, holy shit, this guy is so human. The thoughts that he has, sometimes he reminds me of fucking E.K. or Yamauchi, right? Just thinking about horn, like the girls, right? Horny Koji. That's completely cut out intentionally so that the anime can portray him as this ruthless robot. Nagumo as well, right? Nagumo is now being portrayed not as like this, like, somehow, like, like, like the humanistic part about him is cut off, right? The part about how he just wants, you know, Manabu's acknowledgement, that's all cut off to make sure that Nagumo seems like this fucking, I don't know vampire like fucking villain at the end of the day which i am kind of fine with i don't know is my least favorite it was pretty impressed to see that the anime did a decent job trying to capture the biggest or the somewhat good moments of this arc even if it wasn't fully adapting everything it's the best they could on an arc that not a lot of people were huge fans of not yeah they're trying to show off just the best parts right they don't really care about the other meditation the speech exam which apparently koji had a cool speech but it's like you know they need to cut that shit off. There's too much to adapt. We only have a certain amount of episodes. But it's like, bro, just fucking take your time. Why can't you give me a fucking two core fucking season for this, bro? Straight up, 13 episodes? Fuck that shit. Give me 24. But it's like, fuck you. They're not going to give us 24. So they have to squeeze it in. And then they give us basically just the best parts of it, right? Now, moving on to Volume 9. This is, of course, the Rumors arc. And this is mainly focused on Ichinose as a character and also her past. Because hot take? Maybe not a hot take. I thought that Ichinose's past was fucking bullshit. I thought the shoplifting thing was fucking dumb as fuck. And I understand that in Japanese culture, it's not necessarily the shoplifting thing that we consider trivial in North America, right? In there, it's all about pride, right? It's about honor. And if you shoplift, you're, it's, it's, a fucking, it's a heinous crime. I understand that. But from a gaijin's perspective, watching this shit, Ichinose's past, which has been cooked up since season one, which is like, dude, what is Ichinose's defect? What is she about? I can't wait to know what is holding her back. She fucking shoplifted. She, she, she got a birthday gift for her little sister because her parents are poor. It's like... And everyone's like, Ichinose is a fucking criminal. Arisa was spending the rumor that Ichinose is a criminal. I'm like, oh my god, did she kill someone before? Like, what the fuck? This is getting spicy. And it's like, shoplift. I'm like, really? 
really this is at that point i was just like this is just like funny to me because if you have read this arc seen the anime you would know that this is the moment where sakinagi tried to take down ichinose using one of her darkest secrets and i think the anime did a decent job adapting this of course there were but it was never about taking down ichinose right that was not arisu's intention at all Arisu's goal was to get a reaction out of Coach to see what he would do, right? Now, maybe getting rid of Ichinose is kind of helpful for Arisu because they are in class B, they're right behind. So maybe it's like a two birds, one stone kind of thing. A lot of moments that I wish were included, a lot of conversations that were cut short, but that's basically what I expected because this is also a very long arc as well. And comparing it to the training camp arc, it's at least somewhat <laughs> lethal weapon. Yamauchi. More better than that arc because there was a lot of more interesting things happening, learning about Ichinose's past, learning about why she wanted to run away from her past, and what led her to the school that she is now. I think those were moments that they really captured well. Of course, I really was curious to see how they were going to adapt Ichinose's past as to, of course, if you have watched it, you would know that Ichinose's secret was that she used to shoplift. Now, Whoa! out of all the things that could have been revealed, I oh think my God! this is still by far one of the biggest letdowns. Of course, yeah. this isn't the anime's fault because this is included in the novel. It's just a cultural difference. It, it is. It's, it's just a cultural difference, you know, the Japanese people, the Japanese reader might have a much, they probably do have a much different, you know, opinion on each nose's past and they could probably understand that better but to for us dude like every fucking day all you hear about is just fucking inflation you know grocery fucking stores and mega companies fucking price gouging the average consumer so and even getting rid of cashiers and shit so it's like and now we got self-checkout stations and everyone's basically saying you know fuck these mega corps dude fucking just shoplift this fucking you know you got a fucking organic banana fucking scan out for a regular banana fuck them dude why should we give a fuck about them so it's like shoplifting and stuff like that is almost seen kind of in like a heroic light like you're fucking robin hood you're like robbing from the rich right so it's like when i when, when you have a totally separate culture outside of japan you know experiencing this and you're like oh she shoplifted i'm like Pfft. She stole one fucking, you know, whatever gift for that little sister. I would have stolen another one for the fucking mom, dude. Well, a lot of people wish that Ichinose's past was much more, like, impactful because her just simply robbing ones at a store. Well, yes, robbing is bad. Oh, she no. I think this is not really such a big deal. Like It's not. It be. It's so but dumb. I'm to finally see it get animated. Not to mention as well the whole how Ayana Koji was able to get Ichinose to move away from her past and just stand her ground is actually very different from the novel. In the novel, I haven't read volume 9 in a while, but from what I remember, the way Ayana Koji saved Ichinose in this moment was that she was at her door and Ayana Koji just simply sat outside every yeah. single day yeah every day to just simply confess as to what she was doing which was a very interesting approach and something that i didn't expect ayana Cody to do but in the anime they actually changed this approach where it's just a moment in which ayana koji confronts ichinose <laughs> he's just like kind of just chilling or you know dorm every day just he's just sitting there like you ready to confess you want to you want to tell me what's going on you want to tell me? And then, and then she breaks down. And then Koji's like, <laughs> this will do. Her past, and this leads to Ichinose having a breakdown, which I think it's really interesting how they changed that. And I think I prefer the anime version of how things went out because it really is impactful. And this maybe has something to do with the voice acting because Ichinose's VA did a fantastic job. Maybe a hot take, but remember what Mr. Baseless Yupen said about this and how um, they fucking butchered this adaptation of how Ana Koji's and Ichinose's dynamics were in the anime compared to the light novel. I forget the exact specific details, but I remember really... What's the word? What, what word? It's like beautiful the way that they handled in the light novel. I forget the exact details of what they cut off. I'll have to go go back to my fucking... Go, go watch that video and learn it yourself, but... I hear that the light not like the anime adaptation was kind of really shitty and how they portray this scene specifically from Mr. Baseless Yupin's opinion. Showing just how broken she was at this moment and how clearly she has been holding all her emotions of this secret for a really long time and she didn't let it out until of course Ayana Koji was the one to finally set her free. Of course I like the other little details as well that they included that they actually adapted in the anime which is of course the Valentine's Day in which Kate gives Ayana Koji chocolate. Light novel illustration. I think that was obviously something that they were going to adapt because a lot of people do enjoy Kiyo K, so it's not surprising they were going to adapt this. Of course, Kamuro also now finally made her debut in the Thighs. Like a Thighs. Her or she Shoplifting thighs. Run, but
Thighs, beer, shoplifting thighs, double agent, liar, fucking fraud. Kamaro betrayed us. Now she is fully having conversations and she's now finally been introduced to the series. This is similar to how Nazuna was introduced in the training camp arc because these are two characters that are going to be important for future mm. events that happens in the story. Is it just me or does it, maybe hot take? But like uh, Nazuna, Matsushita, and Kamara, Kamaro, Kamara, they, they, they all... I don't know why their their face structure looks the same. I don't know. Just it feels like same same face, different hairstyle, similar hairstyle. Maybe I'm tripping. So great to see the whole story between Kamru and Sakunagi, how they ended up becoming you know allies. So overall, Friends. it's very clear that basically she stole beer. Arisu watched it. Arisu then said, "I'm gonna fucking blackmail you. You're gonna be my first quote unquote friend, because you wouldn't want the secret leaking, right?" What a great friendship. That the anime put more effort into this arc than the previous one. Probably because this was at least the one that people did like. And people did like the beer. better than Volume 8. <laughs> it's not the best arc. But it's an arc that a lot of people can tolerate. So overall I think they did a decent job adapting this volume as well. Now moving on to the probably one of the most memorable arcs of this series. Is of course Volume 10. Special exam. This is the in-class voting exam arc. In which this is where... The class had to get rid of somebody from their Ooh, own class, which yes. is a very serious and very intense moment of. I love this art, and the exam was so simple. There was no crazy rule set. There's nothing like insane going on. It's simply write down who's gonna get expelled. There is the mechanic of the positive votes and you know the outside class and interference as well. But it's like so simple. So simply, just read out the names like it's Survivor, right? And then the one voted out of Survivor is, and it's so fucking hype, dude. The series, like, this is something that a lot of people were really hoping Lurch did correctly, and they did, but there is very okay. clearly some things that they could have done better. Such now, as? the enemy did try their best, but I feel like they could have done more to make this arc really more intense. In the novel, it was really intense from the moment this exam was introduced. But of course, this did have its very good highlights. Like Hirata showing his other side that many of the other characters were shocked seeing because... Hirata boy! Mask off moment also maybe hot take, but it's like... I don't know. I don't know. It's... I understand his backstory, but it's just like... This didn't make sense to me, man. I understand the trauma. I understand the trauma that he felt when his friend almost went like a vegetative state from the bullying. I understand the bystander effect that was seemingly being repeated when everyone was like fine with casting Yamauchi out. But like Hidata's saying like, you know what, Susanne, fuck you. I'd rather get rid of you than Yamauchi at this point. I'm like, are you actually serious, bro? Are you fucking... I, 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 when I heard that, I was like, you gotta be fucking shitting me. But it was cool to see Hirata's like mask off moment to actually see what is underneath. Because this is another character similar to Ichinose where it's like, he seems so perfect, but there's got to be a defect. Why does he always try to sacrifice himself as the doormat to let everyone step on him for the sake of the class, right? And I even theorized, which was actually cut off in the light novel. And I theorized before, I was like, what if Hirata is like, I'll sacrifice myself for the sake of the class, so that Yamauchi doesn't get banned or uh, expelled, and I'll go out instead. Apparently, they kind of like they skipped mentioning that in the light novel, which kind of made Hirata seem even more kind of cool. But I don't know, Hirata boy, yeah, he, he was fucking bullying Michan too. Nah, 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 nah. Fuck Hirata boy, dude. Koenji fucking better. He is usually the most calmest and friendliest guy, so to see him be very Master. controlling and him demanding that you know when Horikita wanted Yamauchi to get expelled seeing him you know pretty much go at horikita it's something that was very unusual for a lot of the characters and speaking of yamauchi of course this is the arc where yamauchi gets expelled from the school now all according to plan though what if the student that's coming back remember what Skishida said i'm gonna send the students from the white room for the second year <laughs> well no no that doesn't it, no no yamauchi's in second year it's, it's, well maybe he could repeat the year yeah, my, <laughs> now, now we're we're going into the 0.001% meme tinfoil theory territory. But yeah, Yamauchi didn't finish first year. Maybe he can come back. 
and Scooch and O sent him out to back. And this is all according to plan. I don't fucking know. Who is he sending over, bro? Oh, I'm pretty sure nobody was sad at the fact that this character was expelled because he has shown over the course of the entirety of Clash of Duty that he's very insufferable. And the main yes. things that he said and did didn't make him any better. Just him pretty much always making fun of other characters, him just being very ignorant. And, and that's the thing, right? His sin is being stupid and ignorant right maybe the other combination is stupidity and confidence right the most dangerous traits that you can mix in a person is someone that's dumb as fuck but they're so confident that they think that they think they're right they will never second guess or even question themselves and they always think that they're right and this and the confidence just overrides everything and sometimes having a character like that might be useful in fact, I, want, I, I thought the Yamauchi would develop into a tool where he's good at bluffing, right? Be, to be able to say outlandish shit, but to be able to bluff. Kind of like, um, you know, characters like um, Buggy the Clown in One Piece? Or even like Usopp? Or even like in, um, what's the word? Uh, King from One Punch Man. These characters are very lucky characters where sometimes the lie becomes reality. It's like, whoa, how the fuck did that happen? I don't know. I kind of want a Yamauchi to become that kind of character where they just bluff their ass out and somehow it works in favor because Koji was like, you know, making sure that he was taking care of him behind the scenes and he could be used like an actual lethal weapon. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And he just was a fucking asshole from the beginning. Remember Marikita? You remember Marikita, bro? Him being perfectly fine portraying the class during this arc just so that he could maybe, just maybe have a chance with dating Sakinagi because of course Sakinagi was using Yamauchi to see, yep. you know, what Ayana Koji was going to do in this situation. Smug Lolly really held that grudge. You kicked my fucking cane in episode one, you're fucking out. And you know, what was going to happen. And of course this was also done because Sakinagi wanted revenge against Yamauchi because yeah. of what happened in the training camp. So fatty, I love it. You know, tripped her by accident, but he pretty much didn't really seem to be sorry and even made a comment saying that why didn't Sakinagi look where she was going. That's the funniest shit. It's like, he, like she's on the ground and he tries to help her up and Aris is like, I'm good. And Yamauchi like turns around to Ike. And then while she can still hear him, Yamauchi's like, Wow, Aris is so cute, but she's still a klutz. And it's like, EK is like, bro, are you fucking serious? You bumped into her. That was all you. How fucking ignorant could you be? With all of this combined, it's not surprising that all the terrible things that he said and did were going to come back and haunt him. So seeing him, you know, cry and be sad at the fact that he's no longer going to be a part of this school That's was nice. just hilarious. Like, I did not even feel bad for this guy to be expelled from this. I don't think anyone felt bad, right? This is like so much pleasure. Watching Koenji shit on Yamauchi. Oh my god, dude, that was actually peak class in Neely. I would even argue that's like top three episodes in every fucking season. I'm definitely gonna put uh, Ayano Koji versus uh, Ryuin in, in season two as one of the top three episodes. I think this one also counts. Maybe I should make a top five. I don't really know. What would be the third episode? I'm not really sure, but it's definitely in that top, top, top tier where I was like, this is fucking classroom of the peak. Cool. And I think the anime did a good job showcasing this, how, you know, frustrated and angry he was when he found out that he was being expelled. This also includes as well another memorable moment as well with Horikita and her conversation with Manabu in which Horikita finally realizes that. Oh yeah, the, the conversation that only happened because Koji was like, yo, can you do me a favor and talk to your fucking sister on the rooftop? Manabu was like only if the booty call happens after she needs to be doing things that needs to be done as a leader in order to get to class a she no longer needs to be following her brother's shadow and it seems that her finally having a decent conversation with her brother is what really motivated her to take over this exam and do what she felt was the right thing to do so overall volume 10 i did i wish loved it that it was handled more better because i feel like the novel did a much more fantastic job showing just how intense this part of the story was showing i don't think there's going to be any situation where the anime is going to do a better job than the light novel right is there any moment that the anime did better in the light novel i actually don't know i feel like from a light novel reader's perspective they're so biased and rightfully so because the anime adaptation has been pretty pretty fucking ass compared to you know this when they, when they mention the stuff that's cut out every time i after i watch an episode i'm like fuck god damn it that could have been so much better so you know every time we make this comment saying 
Wish the anime could have done a better job. It's like, yeah, that's the, pretty much the theme of this entire series, bro. How every character seemed to be intense and worried that they were going to be expelled. And of course, all the things that were happening behind the scenes was also interesting to see that sadly were also cut from the anime because due to how long it was going to take if this were to get adapted. And then moving on to volume 11, this is of course the battle between Saki Nagi and Ayana Koji. Chess match. The battle that a lot of people were waiting for to see how they were going to adapt it. And once again, it was decent. I do think that this battle was something that a lot of people were looking for. What about the Skishiro stuff in the beginning, right? I think the Skishiro moment was fucking sick, but then... Ayana Koji looked really wonky during the moment when he was pinned against the wall by Skishiro's elbow. And we're going to go back to the whole topic of does animation matter for a series like this? I think it does. Even, and I've made the claim myself that, like, you know, an anime that doesn't have that much action because it's all about character development through dialogue and mind games. You don't really need good animation. It doesn't need to have it, but it can always be better with better animation. And even those dialogue moments, if it was better animated, can have a better impact, right? You don't need to have fight scenes, right? Even if, like, the dialogues and the conversations were better animated, I think it would come to life a little bit more. So it's like, eh, it fucking sucks. I think that the Skishiro moment, though, was really cool, though. I think that the whole Skishiro moment, you know, just kicking down Arisu's cane. And that was an anime-only decision, right? Because in the light novel, Koji apparently saved uh, Arisu from being kicked down, um, from falling down, right? But in the anime, they intensely made Skishiro to be such a giga-chad. Kicks the fucking cane, she falls down. And Koji tries to save Arisu, nah, nah, nah. Elbow to the fucking wall, boom. And I was like, damn, okay. So the anime has decided, you know, this is an important character and we're going to have our own little spin or a little take on this. And in the light novel, maybe Koji was a little bit more cooler, but in the anime, we're going to make Skishiro go even more goat. Looking forward to mainly because unlike the battle between Ryu and Ayana Koji, which was a physical battle, this is the battle of the brains. And so to see two smart characters Battle of the Brains while they show unoptimal chess play during the anime. And I, I, apparently there's a lot of chess enthusiasts, right? I don't know shit about chess. I know how the pieces can move, but at best I can only see one or two, you know, moves ahead of what the opponent's going to do. Apparently the chess match was so fucking bad. There was so much unoptimal plays and it just was fucking dumb. But again, to the average person, they don't give a fuck. They, they, the chess does not matter. They could have been playing fucking checkers. That, that's not the point of this arc, right? The point is obviously trying to reach Anakoji's heart through a game that they enjoy together and to be able to compete on that level. That's been foreshadowed since the beginning where Arisu first saw Anakoji in the white room where Sakainagi's dad was like, you know what? Some humans, like Anakoji, they'll just never know the warmth of the human heart and you, you need to make sure that, you know, they, if the white room became a thing again in the future, you need to stop that and maybe one day reach Koji's heart and then she kind of made it a goal. So that was like a beautiful thing for her. Going after each other in this exam was really interesting to see. Of course, I really do like how Lurch also used a few flashbacks to show us why Sakinagi you know, is so infatuated with Ayana Koji, you know, why does she enjoy chess so much, why she has been practicing to play in chess. I think these flashbacks were done well because it does show us that even though Saginai and Ayana Koji haven't really, you know, seen each other a whole lot, they have a long history, even mm -hmm. though they probably didn't think they were ever going to see each other face to face, but here they are. And of course, the other highlights also include the whole conversation between Harata and Ayana Koji, in which Ayana Koji finally tells Harata that, you know, the only way he could save the clan. That should do it. Oh, the Hirata breaking. The Wait, Ayana Koji and Hirata moment? That was last arc. Wait, there was a Hirata and Ayana Koji moment? Was there? In, the, in this arc? As if he becomes a much more better person and he does. But wasn't, wasn't this like last arc? No, no, no. This continues because Hirata was like so down and he's still being a fucking meanie to Michan. That, that was... I, I forget the order of fucking operations now. God damn, I thought this is... No, no, no. This carries over into the chess arc. And then there's a the whole bench moment. But then this is where instead of Anakoji sitting down with Hirata on the bench and telling him, you know what? Men are allowed to cry. You know what? It's fine. Instead, the enemy just made him even more cold and ruthless and just looked down on him and says, that should do it, right? He just had a fucking spread your legs moment to K and, and he broke him down and he built him back up. Things, no matter what it takes to save the class. So it was great to see that get adapted. Although in the novel, I do say it's much more better because Ayana Koji... The brotherhood, right? The, 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 
the human aspect of Ayano Koji is shown in the light novel, which they intentionally cut off again. And I don't think this is studio lurch or whoever's directing this anime. Like, I don't think this is a mistake on their part, Sorry, an accidental mistake on their part. I think that the fact that they're cutting off these human aspects of Ayano Koji is very intentional. But he's actually sitting next to Harata, listening to him out. And I think this is just simply a very impactful, wholesome moment because you see Ayana Koji trying to help somebody out that is dealing with a lot. Whereas in the anime, it made it look like Ayana Koji knew this was going to happen. This was all just a part of a plan. And the reason that should do it right why he was saying to Hirazu that he needed to become a better person and to work harder to save the class was just so that he could accomplish his plan when that's not really exactly the case that was happening in the light novel the one thing i wish the anime did adapt was the battle of ryuben and ichinose because this was actually a very important all the laxative stuff right that was kind of very skipped over it was pretty funny how albert was stalking them the entire time and we eventually got laxative poured on them and every exam was like event was like a um, physical event because they gotta fucking shit their pants out battle not just for ichinose but for ryun as well it showed us that he has finally come back after his defeat with ayana koji and mm -hmm. he is going to try to take down ichinose and sakanagi the fire is back in dragon boy and ryun showing up without protection points while every captain did have protection points that was pretty hype and it's really cool to see that our favorite war criminal who waterboarded k is finally back and everyone loves him bro everyone Once loves him for all i think this was necessary because it showed us also what ryun was willing to do to win which if you're not a light novel reader in actuality the way ryun beat class laxatives B was because ruin actually gave class b members laxative therefore they couldn't do well in the exam which yeah. just showed us what he was willing to do even if what he did not only harm people but it was also against school rules that is something that is unfortunately not included in the anime and i wish that wasn't the case no that was not against school rules what do you mean it was each his class that was all fucking strategizing in the bathroom together they were stalling no ruin was the one that was being duped these fucking class b goons all went to the bathroom at the same time. Kind of suspicious, don't you think? Now, moving on to 11.5, this being the end of first year, this is where we get to see all the things that, you know, pretty much are going to be a setup for second year. We see finally the conversation <laughs> with Horikita and Manabu one last time, in which Manabu says goodbye to not just Ayana Koji, but to the school as well as he has already graduated his third year we see ayana koji is really respectable towards manabu and he's mm -hmm. probably the only person that ayana koji has great respect for which is nice to see finally right because it's like ayana koji has one regret right the fact that manabu doesn't have one more year with him right the fact that he's already graduating the one person that apparently could have changed ayana koji that was straight up in the light novel what does that mean change him right does that mean to make him see other people's not as tools i'm not really sure what the implication there but apparently manabu was the one person that could have really changed anakoji and the whole discussion about how leaving a legacy behind anakoji what do you really want to do right and he was talking about like a legacy and then anakoji was like i'm not really care about that but then when he said what about having a long lasting impression in the people at the school so that your legacy you know lives on in their minds in that point anakoji was like whoa that was the one time, a very few times, where we see Anakoji actually kind of be, what's the word, astonished, kind of shocked, like, damn, you kind of cooking here. To get adapted, we see Horikita finally tell Manabu <laughs> that she was in the wrong and that her line of thinking was wrong, and she's showing how much she's actually trying to change, not just by her saying that she's going to be her own person, but also changing her appearance as well as she's cut her hair in this moment as well since it was revealed that the only reason why horikita even had long hair was because manabu said i like girls with long hair but that was actually a lie to see if suzune would actually do something and she did hook lining sinker fucking baited she thought this was the preference that manabu liked he liked seeing girls with long hair so she let her hair grow even why wouldn't Tachibana have long hair then, huh? Because Tachibana fucking knew, bro. Though she always liked having short hair. So it's these moments that were really great to see finally get adapted. We also had, of course, the thing that a lot of people were looking forward to. And this was Kei and Ayana Koji finally being together. Which ah, is basically going to our textbook. What does textbook even mean? So a tool is someone you use, right? It's a hammer. It's a fucking, you know, a, a screwdriver. It's useful to do some kind of action, right? They're all tools to Anakoji, but a textbook. 
And this is came up being what's it called? Um, during the last moment where Anakoto was like, you know what? For K's development, she I uh, think this romance is good, and for myself too, this is a good opportunity to learn. And now I'm seeing K not as a tool, but as a textbook. As in, instead of just using her as a tool, he is reading her. He is observing her and kind of trying to understand what love could be. Is is that the interpretation of when he said? You are a textbook, right? He is reading the textbook to learn about love. Like I, I, I don't, I don't fucking know. Going to be shown more in the following year, in second year, and we're going to see how much progress the relationship is and is going to have in the future. So that's pretty much overall the entirety of season three of Classroom of the Elite. It had some good moments. It also had some bad moments. And I just overall think it's a very mixed reaction of how I feel about this season. Obviously, I don't really know where to begin with, with how this could have been done so much better. I feel like it's great to see characters that, you know, are finally being introduced in this series, like Nazuna, Nagumo, Kamuro. We finally get to see them finally be animated, but at the same time, there were many characters that I wish got their own moment as well, because that's what really makes Plasm the Elite special. It isn't just moments with Ayana Koji or Horikita or the main cast of characters. It's I agree. It's all the side characters that's kind of shown in the background and eventually as time passes they get more spotlight and they're actually becoming more important i really love that aspect of the show those are the side characters as well that makes this story all the more interesting to read classroom of the elite is one of those stories that if you're going to adapt it into an anime you're going to need more than just 12 or 13 episodes it needs to be two core 24 episodes no split core all back to fucking back and you know what people make the argument and say what if you did that we would still be in year one and i'm like so what? So what? You want to fucking rush this and feel fucking empty at the end of the day because it's been fucking done? It's about the journey. It's about enjoying a show that you look forward to each week. It's about having something good to look forward to. I don't give a fuck if we're still back in the sports festival arc right now, fighting Ryuin, bro. I don't give a fuck. As long as they actually adapted the light novel material in a way that it deserves, and I am totally fine with having much, quote-unquote, slower pacing as long as each episode has plenty of content where it doesn't feel like the pacing is slow, right? And when I say pacing, some people say like, uh, uh, like a pacing is slow for them if the episode had like nothing happen, right? So in terms of like plot progression, I guess the pacing would be slow. But if you adapted it correctly, each episode, even if you don't have a lot of like development in terms of the plot, as long as you include all the different fun shit going on, it's not going to feel slow. You're going to need at least 20 plus episodes to really show us what makes this story great and why so many people are huge fans of this series. Of course, that being said, if you're an anime only, you're not really going to see mm -hmm. the changes or the many things that happen yep. in the anime as a big deal because you don't know what is in the light novel, so you really don't know how much of the source material is being used and what. And that's the thing. Ignorance is bliss. If you don't know what you're missing out on, how could you ever be mad, right? And th there are two sides of these things, right? I think being ignorant is not really a good thing. Understanding the true potential and knowing what you're missing out on, I think everyone deserves to know that, right? Even if it make, might make you feel salty. Like, every time I hear about what's been cut out from the episodes, I'm like, fuck, that could have been so much more potential, right? But on the other hand, right? On the other hand of things, right? Is it so bad? Is it so bad that they, the anime onlys are enjoying the show? Because, like, because the anime onlys are enjoying the show and they have no idea what they're missing out on, they think this is fucking peak the anime continues to be successful. But I th uh, then again, if it continues to do that, then that's like a precedent, right? Studio Lurch is like, ah, we can feed these fucking idiots, you know, all this rush material, they'll fucking eat it up. Fuck it, we'll just keep doing that, right? I don't know. I don't know, we're in a, we're in a tough situation. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a tough uh, realization to realize that the anime is simply a tool for light novel. <laughs> advertisement it is what it is man what is not but if you're a light novel reader like myself then you very quickly can tell how drastically different the anime is from the light novel and it's unfortunate that you know the anime could have done much more better than it has yeah. to because every time clash from the elite anime is always up in discussions you have people say they like it some people don't like it 
and just recommend you to read the light novels because it's a much more better source than the anime which i do tend to agree sometimes i do feel like if you want the full experience of classroom daily you gotta read the light novel might as well just read the novels and if you are interested yep. in watching the anime first then you should go right ahead and then read the novels so then you can see how different it is but overall while the anime isn't perfect i still had a great time watching it every week every episode i didn't same see i never felt bored or felt like it had to be a chore to watch the entire of an episode because straight up coat has been one of the shows that i look forward to each week the most definitely of this current season and of all anime maybe it's a little biased because people show a lot more love to me when i make coat content the coat community has always been there even the fucking light novel you know readers are always been there enjoying my takes on the anime i've enjoyed it so maybe there's a little bit of a bias you know because i've been showing so much love from the coat community but even without that i think that this anime has been fantastic and i i feel like Despite its shortcomings, it's still been a very pleasant experience covering. Every episode was just simply something that I enjoyed watching every single week. I did enjoy how some very iconic and memorable moments in Classroom of the Elite got adapted and finally got animated. Although, that T-Rex scene. T-Rex scene. Being said, there were some moments that were cut completely. Like in volume 11.5, there was a moment in which Hori Susan cried crying? because she regrets not having to spend so much time with her bird because of the way she used to be. That guy. With, 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 well, with her bird? She regrets not having to spend so much time with her bird because of. Susan had a pet bird that we didn't. It's probably Manabu, right? It's brother. Yeah, I think he meant to say brother, but it came out as a bird for some reason. The way she used to be, that got cut, which was shocking to me. Because that's that's crazy, bro. I, I can't believe the anime cut out the fact that Susan had a pet bird. That's fucked up. Studio Lurch literally cut out the fact that light novel Susan had a pet bird and she couldn't spend time with the fucking bird and she's crying. I cannot believe they did this shit, bro. Cancel Katakala and Studio Lurch. This is a very important moment, not just for her character but for her growth as well. You know, I'm kind of confused to this very day why in the trailer they showed so many illustrations that we thought were going to get at that. Yeah, apparently the trailer is like every time, even in season two as well, right? The trailers show so many scenes, iconic moments, and then the anime, they just like skip that shit or just like have it change. For example, the rooftop scene where Anakoji is punching down, that is the fight scene against Ryuin in the gym, right? That was totally different. And there was many other scenes in the season three trailer that was just never shown in the anime. Adapted, but they didn't get adapted whatsoever. Not to mention that the animation in this season was very similar to season two, which is also confusing because for those who don't know, originally Classroom the Elite was supposed to come out in the fall of 2023. That was oh. where season three was supposed to air. But then it got delayed until winter 2024. And with the delay, surely you were prepared to animate it better, right? And many people thought, including myself, that, oh, this means that they're going to put more effort into the animation. Yeah, surely. It looks good. But it looks very still the same as season two. In fact, <laughs> there's one episode infamously now known. Episode nine of season three. It looks Oh good. yeah. Oh yeah. Their faces are so fucking wonky, man. This is the episode where Skishiro showed up, right? Bad. Like the character designs are so off. I can clearly tell that this was outsourced. Like, yeah. This was not Lurch doing them because they just look very weird, the character designs. Not to mention that I don't know, it's just something about the episode that just seems really off-putting compared to the other episodes. Also, another thing that's also worth mentioning is how some episodes <laughs> also felt rushed as well. Like, there were many scenes that were... I will always laugh when Arisu fucking trips because someone kicks her cane, dude. It's still funny to me every fucking time. Really, you know... I'm ableist, TS. You know, ...going really fast just to get to the next point, which really just killed the character development or the impact of that scene that was going to be effective in the near future as well. So overall, my final thoughts of the season... It the only well animated parse portion of Classroom the Elite, uh, what was it? Finale? Ruin trying to gouge Anakoji's out into a spinning high kick. That? Like, could you imagine if the anime always looked like that? That would be crazy, right? That would be like, oh my god, this is actually reaching Demon Slayer level of fucking animation, but it's like, nah. They just saved all the budget for that one fucking scene, dude. It was decent. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't <laughs> either. I do think that if they do... This is the wonky face, right? <laughs> I just thought the crowd is always so funny to me, but...
right this 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 koji face right here i think a lot of people are upset about how wonky this looks even though this is a pretty important moment man if they do plan on making year two and they do plan on adapting those volumes as well they should right there is no shot that we're not gonna get a season four right there the success of the anime the fact that the light novel has plenty of content for us to animate into season four i feel like Season 4 is definitely going to happen. And, like, what happened between Season 1 and 2? Wasn't there, like, a fucking... How long of a gap was it? Wasn't there, like, at least 5 plus years between, like, Season 1 and Season 2? Like, I feel like... Exactly. Follow the money, right? If, if the anime is printing the money, and even though people are mad about it, like, at the end of the day, all that matters is that people are willing to watch. And I think that the past three seasons has kind of proven that. So, Season 4... I think it's definitely gonna happen. They need to have somebody else do it. Like, Karakawa really needs to have a different studio to do it. So, he's saying Karakawa needs a different studio to do it, but didn't Basis Yupin say, and I'm not sure who's correct here, it's not Studio Lurch's fault. Because Karakawa is the one giving the budget and the strict schedule to Lurch, and Lurch is just working with what they got. So, whose fault is it really? Is it Studio Lurch, or is it Karakawa? that's making these studios work with, it's basically setting them up for failure i don't know because i don't know the inner machinations of what happens behind the scenes when anime is made because lurch just isn't the studio to do it at all i know that they aren't always in a wrong because they're not always going to have decisions like for example the episodes i am fully aware that karakawa is the one that tells them how many episodes this there we go. series is going to have and so he how knows many episodes will it have and that's something that's beyond their control. But I feel like they should at least put somewhat more effort into adapting this because it's very clear they have their moments in which they do put full effort, but then there's moments that they just clearly don't put as much effort, which it shouldn't be inconsistent. You shouldn't have moments where you could tell they're putting effort in moments where you feel like they're not doing anything at all with the source. And that's just a really great shame. If they do happen to make year two, I would prefer a different studio to do it. Or I would prefer Karakawa to give them more episodes to make because... Honestly, I am a part of the mindset that I wish that um, we would get a different studio or a different producer or whatever and get more episodes. You no, know, enough of these 12 to 13 episodes, give me 24. But the thing is, right, I win no matter what. As in, if people are mad, if people are upset, they're just more video essays for me to react to. There's more things about people getting mad about that I can cover and I can farm those and make money off of. And if they do good, then the people are going to be making glaze in this series and they're going to talk about how amazing the adaptation is compared to the previous seasons and blah, blah, blah. And I can farm that and I can fucking make money off of. At the end of the day, I come up on top. You can't make Classroom the Elite with just 12 or 13 episodes. And True. that's all I'm going to say at the moment. So far, at the time of recording this, there hasn't been an announcement that second year is in development or something like that. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, that's pretty much my quick thoughts. That should of do it. Season. If I were to go through. Quick thoughts, my ass. This is a fucking 20 minute video, bro. To every single detail about what I liked and what I didn't like about season three, then we'd be here all day. So. Yeah, that's where I'm going to end the video. Hope you right. enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Guys, that's a nice summary of the good, the bad, and the future of Code. Please go to Mr. Blazer's channel. The Give Hydro like. Sovereign. Oh, Jesus Christ. Class Jesus Christ. Of like his videos if you did. Sub to his channel if you'd like. And I think that Season 3 was very fun. It was very enjoyable. But again, knowing what was missed out and just feeling that the anime could be better but it just can't because of the current structures of Karakawa and Studio Lurch. It's just very unfortunate. But hey, you got the light novel content to, you know, cover. And maybe, who knows, maybe season four, you know, year two, we're going to fucking apparently Studio Lurch contract resets. Who knows what's going to happen? And maybe they're just a copium that, you know, the anime in season two, sorry, season four and year two going forward will get the adaptation that it deserves. And that should do it for me.